hey, we're starting a brand new series that's called Already Loved, and it's taken from the song that we just did called Gyra. A lady named Naomi Rain is the female lead in that song, and she sings that, that verse that I'm already loved. It's the bridge. So I took, as I was listening, I don't know, about three weeks ago, I was writing out notes and so forth and had my little noise cancelings on and trying to keep myself composed in the middle of a crude coffee shop. And I titled it, when I was listening to the song, I wrote at the top of the paper, Already Loved. And uh, so the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about being already loved. In a few weeks, we've got some great things coming up. Michelle and uh, Allie are going to be doing that Love You Latte. That's going to be on the 11th. February 11th, that's a Friday. So ladies, if you want to be a part of that, I know they would love for you to be a part of that. And then I forgive me for the date, but the Wednesday before uh, uh, Valentine's Day, so y'all are the 11th, is it going to be the 9th? So the 9th, we're going to have guest speaker Elizabeth Clark Hoverman. So just to, you're going to enjoy her so much. Um, and I'll give you a sneak peek. I've already talked to her and um, she said, what do you want me to minister on? And I said, I want you to minister on, on Hurts Healed. She says, I got it. I was like, oh my gosh. So um, you just have to hear her story and it's gonna be a great, great night. And I'm actually gonna kick off a series um, that I've got kind of in the works in my heart when it comes to hearts that have been healed. Um, there's healing beyond uh, being hurt. So, but we're gonna kick it off that night with a special ladies night. So let's go ahead and go to our foundation scripture, which is gonna be in Romans if you're taking notes or need notepads, if you'll raise your hand and we'll get you a fill in as quick as we can. Anybody need one? So our foundation scripture is such hope never disappoints, and I'm in the Amplified, or deludes or shames us. So it's talking about hope right here in, in Romans, but then it takes a little bit of a shift right here, and I want you to see something. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And you know me, I've got to grab the passion. So take a look at the passion paraphrase or the translation. It says, and this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we have now experienced the endless love of God cascading over our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Your first feeling is this, hearts are looking for hope and love. I meant love. <laughs> Hearts are looking for love. I realize this, and in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try to pull this all together, is that so many hearts have been hurt. And they've been disappointed. And the Word of God says in, in Romans that God's love was poured out over our hearts. I like, I like the idea that, that I didn't have to I didn't have to ask for that love to be poured in. That, pour, that, heart, that love was just poured over my heart, the Word of God says, by the Holy Spirit, that hearts have become used to being disappointed. If you, if you want to know where people really live in their lives, they live at a place where somewhere, somehow, their hearts have been disappointed. Through pain, through loss, through tragedy, through rejection, through... Um, abuse, all the, all the different things, through expectations that, that just didn't measure up. And disappointment happens in their, and their heart becomes in a low place when it comes to love. Disappointment comes from living in a fallen world. I have to admit something to you really quickly. Over the last couple of weeks, and this was confirmed today, I've been going and watching these videos, and I don't even know how I'm finding them. I, know, I don't want to be, you know, spooky spiritual, but they've just been being let, I've just been just kind of finding them on YouTube, and one was a video of, of a guy named Toby Mack that lost his oldest son to um, a drug overdose, and then another one was Rick Warren who lost his son to suicide. And that, kind of, that has really sparked the series about hurts being healed that we'll go into in February. But Rick Warren said this statement that I just thought was so profound. He said, how are we pastors? He's the author of the book, uh, Purpose Driven Life, that's in like a hundred and something different languages. It's sold a bazillion copies. And here this man, Rick Warren, 
loses his son. His son takes his own life um, and just the tragedy of that. But he said this one thing in this clip I watched. He said, I have to understand that, I'm, that, I'm, that I live in, that his wife's Kay, that Kay and I, we live in a fallen world. And, and it's not perfect. The word of God says it rains on the just and the unjust. And how much more is it important to know that we've already been loved? That it's not, it's not a love based on the circumstances of Jonathan's life, but it's based on the heart of a father. And so when your heart becomes heavy, when life becomes difficult, you have to remember that this world that we live in right now is temporary. That it's a fallen world. I saw this today and I thought it was just great. It, the, the statement was that we're not physical beings with a spirit. We're spirit beings with a physical, <laughs> a physical part. We're all spiritual beings. And I don't mean to be creepy. Hopefully I'm making more sense, but our home is heaven. This isn't our home. Our home is the heart of God that we're making our way to that. And we're supposed to enjoy it along the way, but hopefully that's a little bit of explanation that po disappointment is then carried into other parts of our lives. When our heart's been disappointment, when we feel like there's a lack of love upon us, then, then we carry that into different parts of our lives. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody and all of a sudden all the pain, all the disappointment, all the, uh, the, the junk from their past relationship start to, to weave their ways into the current one you're in? The weird part about that is sometimes it's like, they're responding to things that you didn't even do. <laughs> and what does that come from? That comes from a heart that's been wounded, a heart that doesn't know that they're already loved. And they place that unrealistic expectation upon someone else that has come from disappointment. But God's love has made its place, according to Romans, it's Romans 5, it's made its place in our very hearts that where is the love of God? Where is it carried? Where, where is the conduit? What does it flow through? And according to Romans, that it flows through our heart by the Holy Spirit. It's been put in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that I love this thought that God's love finds its home in our heart. I don't know about you, but I, sometimes I don't like, feel like anything should be living in this heart, but God's love does. Hey, Sammy, you want to come try this thing out again real quick? Isn't that a wonderful thought? That right now, last week we talked about him walking around on the inside of you. The reason he's walking around on the inside of you is because his heart's in there. His love is in there. Try it again. Try it again. Let's see. Mm, you're still I don't know, okay. You're getting better at it. Oh, Samuel, try it on the end. Maybe it's easier on the end. Try it on the end. Try it right there. No? Okay. I thought it'd be different. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Sammy. Have you ever heard this song? You're like, what is he doing? You'll see. <laughs> Have you ever heard the song, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places? <laughs> we could all make t-shirts in this place, right? Because we've all been a part of that club. I would have presidents <laughs> looking for love in all the wrong places. Both times I looked for love. No, <laughs> you don't know I'm... 49 and still single, so yeah. I don't know why people are laughing at that. <laughs> but you've, you've heard that song, but how true is that? That we've looked for it in a relationship, we've looked for it in a situation, we've looked for it in our circumstances, we've looked for it in, uh, in the things of this world, we've looked for it in really trying to find the contentment of our heart. And outside of what God put on the inside of us, we're never gonna find that contentment until we turn inwardly and see that according to Romans 5, that his love was poured out in my heart. That my, as your heart sits there right now, the love of God is, is marinating your heart. I don't always feel that, Jonathan, that's okay. I don't always feel like eating broccoli, but I know it's good for me. You just don't, we don't go by feelings. The only place to look for love is within our hearts because he's seated there. His love has made his home there. 
His love, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but, but his love has made a place for himself there. What a wonderful thought. And, and I thought about this. I didn't, I didn't ask for this. I didn't, I didn't uh, sign up for a survey. I didn't get part of the text list. I just all, he just decided that his love would be poured in my heart. Look in Romans 8, just a few chapters from where we just were. It says the mature children of God are those who are moved, who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into fear of never being good enough, but you have received a spirit of full acceptance enfolding into the family of God and you will never feel orphaned for as he rises up within us, our spirit joins him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. In other translations, it says, Abba, father. The next verse says, and for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us, and I love this, who the amplified, it's worth its weight in right here. As the God's fatherhood reveals us, as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. That what is, here's what we think sometimes, we think the Holy Spirit is always whispering correction. We think that the Holy Spirit is always whispering, uh, do something different in your life. Do something better. Do something more holy. Do something more spiritual. And that's not, his, that's not what he's primarily saying, even though it might be part of what he's saying. You know what he's saying? You're already loved. <laughs> that right now in your heart, the Holy Spirit, his, his paramount job, his first job is to whisper into this heart that's been poured over with the love of God. You are all ready, loved. Here's the problem, and it said it in verse 15, that our problem is we live from an orphan spirit. The issue is not God's love. The issue is who we think we are. We can, a lot of times, hallelujah and amen, I'm a child of God, but a lot of times my life reflects that I think I'm an orphan. An orphan feels abandoned, unwanted, without support. You don't have to raise your hand, nor those watching, but have you ever felt, have you ever felt abandoned? Have you ever felt unwanted? Have you ever felt without support? And I'm not discounting those feelings. Those feelings are real. Those feelings are true. Some not true, they're not true, but they happen. But the truth is that you're not orphaned that there is a spirit that comes directly from the heart of God, the Holy Spirit that whispers in our heart, you're already loved. That God never designed you to feel anything attached to an orphan spirit. The, the, it says in Romans 8 that something, that something connected, working inside my heart, something ticking inside of there, the mechanics of my heart is, is ticking in a pattern that says, Abba, Father that says, Father God, that says he's my dad, that says I'm already loved by him. I don't necessarily always sense that or feel it or are conscious of it, but that's the way your heart is made, that your heart was designed to always have that cry out for Abba Father that an orphan spirit will say, and let me read you some stuff or we'll fill in some stuff, that an orphan spirit will say this, an orphan spirit will say, I am not enough. I don't measure up, I don't add up, I don't compare enough. I don't have what others have. I can't do what others can do. I'm not talented, I'm not gifted, I'm not spiritual. I'm, and we, the list goes on and on. That, that that orphan spirit, that spirit that does not come from God will say that I am not enough. An orphan spirit will say, I have to prove myself to others. And as I was writing this, I, I put in this last piece. I will have to prove myself to others and to me. 
You know, sometimes we can be pretty confident when it comes to other people. I don't care what you think about me, but you know, the truth is I can never run, I can never run from what I think about myself. But everything connected to that comes from an orphan spirit. The spirit, that's not, the spirit of God does not say that I have to prove myself to others and certainly to myself. The orphan spirit says I've been abandoned. And if you think about an orphan, an or, somebody that's left in an orphanage, no parents, maybe nobody that wants them at the moment. And so all those things can be said that I'm not enough, that, that I don't measure up, that, that I've been abandoned. But here's good news. The spirit of sons and daughters say this. And before, before you even go, we go any further, you are a son, you are a daughter, and there's nothing you can do about it. As a matter of fact, when you accepted Jesus, it, you got the whole kit and caboodle. Because as soon as you decided that, the spirit of the living God, his, his love was poured out over your heart. Here's what sons and daughters says, that I am enough because he is more than enough. Aren't you glad you don't have to be impressed with yourself? <laughs> that I am enough because he is more than enough. Everything that I'm weak, the apostle Paul is, everything I'm weak in, he's already strong in it. The spirit of a son and daughter says, I am loved just as I am. That I don't have to change something about me dramatically before I can be loved and accepted, that I'm accepted just as I am. The spirit of a son or a daughter, that spirit that's put on us says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> Don't raise your hand, but are you with me? I don't feel fearfully and wonderfully made very often at all. <laughs> That's not what the Father says about us. That's not what the Holy Spirit says. The Holy Spirit whispers in that place of your heart, you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made because you are already loved. That spirit of the son and daughter says, I am a son or a daughter. I want you to try this. If your parents aren't here, go home tonight and tell your mom, tell your dad, I decided I'm not going to be your son or your daughter. I'm not worthy. <laughs> Find out what happens. <laughs> Here's what they're going to say. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous that we would do that in the natural, but we do it with God all the time. I'm not worthy to be your son or your daughter. You know what your mom or dad are gonna say? Well, you didn't decide that. <laughs> when we got together and had you, we decided that for you, that you would belong to us forever. And so it is with God. He didn't ask you. He didn't get your take. He didn't get you to sign the survey. He didn't have you do the Google form. He just decided for you. A couple of weeks ago, right on Christmas break, there was a young man in our school that um, his mother passed away. And I had the young man in class a couple of years before, not the current school year. And um, I went to the funeral and it was an outside funeral. And uh, Found the young man, hugged him when I got there, and uh, you know it's just tragic. It's very his mother was younger than me, I believe, and she passed away. and And I was I was standing there waiting for the service, and then as the service was going on and so forth, I just I noticed this that there was just a lot of young people there, and specifically, the mother had um, two sons, and so was, there was a lot of uh, young men there. And as I'm standing there watching everything go on, I've, I noticed that there was a lot of young men there about this student's age and a little bit older, but there was very few grown men there. And there was some, there was, there was I mean, it was a, a fair amount, but there was not a bunch. And so I saw these young men interacting with each other in this just horrific moment, consoling each other. They would, you know, they would the sons would, were speaking and, you know, their friends would come around them and 
you know, hug them while they were saying, I thought that was wonderful. And I went up to a couple of them. I just recognized them from school. I didn't know who they were, but just thanked them for being there as a friend. But I didn't see very many men. And finally, toward kind of toward the end, I'm, I'm standing like across from this group of people where I can see a lot of these young guys. And just, they don't, let me say this. They, they just didn't know what to do with this moment. They didn't know how to process this moment. They didn't know how to get through this moment. Just stricken with grief, as you can imagine. And finally, I saw this one guy. He looked like he was a little bit older than I was. Tall guy, kind of Western wear looking guy. And he must have known those guys. And he just got in the middle of them. And he's just holding on to all of them. And I guess I would have done that too, but I didn't know. I just knew the, the student. That was all that I knew, knew, knew. And he's just going through the crowd of them, grabbing these young men, holding on to them. And I realized what has become of us. I don't need to tell you that men have not taken their place. I don't need to tell you that. I don't need to tell you that fathers have not been fathers that they should have been, but I will tell you why. Because the enemy has a plan to so hurt people through the absence or the abuse or the, or the uh, rejection of a father that if, if we get rejected by an earthly father, we'll hold God to that same standard. And so he has a plan there that he'll have, let me say it this way, they'll have men behave as boys, that they'll have a, a son or a daughter and then they won't act like a father. They won't behave as a, as a guardian. And so I saw this just, you know, whatever it was, 40, 50 young men over there, just grief stricken. And finally, you know, something inside of me said, why didn't you do that? Because I didn't, I mean, I didn't know them, but I probably should have. And he just starts going over there and grabbing them. There's a young man that lives next door to me. His name is Kivion. Kivion has a little girl. Her name is, is uh, I'm going to get it wrong. Sharonda, if you're watching, forgive me. Oh, I can't think of her name at the moment. But Kivion, probably in his early 20s, young father, he is always taking care of that little girl. And she's a little over one. Uh, no, she's over two. So I caught him in the street the other day because they play basketball out in the street. And so they trample the heck out of my grass. I hope Sharonda's not watching. <laughs> and, but they play, play uh, basketball out there. And I think they like my yard because it's got some grass and it's kind of soft. And so I say, Kivion, come here, come here, come here, come here. He goes by Key. I say, Key, come here, come here. And he's all wide-eyed like, <laughs> what is this bald-headed white man? I mean, I know who he is, but he's like, they call me Mr. Jonathan. Yes, Mr. Jonathan. I said, you listen to me. And I grabbed his shoulders. Kilani, holy cow. Kilani's a little girl. I said, no man will love Kilani like you do. So keep loving her like you are and she'll hold whoever she's in a relationship with, she'll hold her to your standard. And he's, you know, he's all kind of, yes, sir, yes, sir. I said, you listen to me. All, you're, you have shown me through the last, I've lived there for five, six years and they've lived next to me all the time. So I've seen him since she was a baby until now, just cherish this little girl. I said, Key, don't stop. Keep on being a dad. What's your point, Jonathan? My point is when there's that break in, in that earthly father, the enemy just wreaks havoc with that. And he makes us think that God is the same way. And he's not. He's, he's, he's different. An orphan spirit 
will have you pursue a life that will still leave you unfulfilled. So many people, so many people searching. I mean, I don't need to tell you, we don't even need to run the list, but so many people searching for hope, for, for security, for acceptance, for meaning of life, and, and they're searching and searching, and they still find themselves unfulfilled. And what is it is that, is that they don't, they, they haven't made that place to know that they're already loved. They've already been, been loved. That an orphan spirit will have you act out behavior that a son and daughter would not act out. Have you ever had that where you're like, why did I do that? Why did I respond that way? Why did I, why did I have to be so petty? Why did I have to be so, so childish? Why did I have to be so uh, vengeful? Why did I have to be so, so selfish? Well, it's all, all of that's birthed out of an orphan spirit. Because the spirit that's birthed out of love won't respond those ways. And we're all guilty of it. But a, but a reaction that's birthed out of a heart that's love has grace, has mercy, has hope, has love. If you make that statement, Allie, if you'll come on down, that I have received and live already love. Sam, you want to try it one more time? Run up here real quick. Let me read you this last scripture in 1 John. Now this time I want you to really sit on. You don't have to fall this time. I coached him all the way through this, so it is, it's comfy, isn't it? Oh, there you go. There you go. That's nice. And that's nice, isn't it, Sammy? He looks comfortable, doesn't he? Man, I'm making me tired just sitting there. All right, y'all, thank you, Sammy. Thank you, thank you. By the way, this was the bed I slept in when we had snowmageddon in February. All of our power was out, and we were here at the church. <laughs> so that was the bed I slept in during snowmageddon right there. It was comfy. 1 John 4, 18 says this, Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. Love will only drive fear out when it's accepted. When it's accepted. That when I accept that love that's made its home in my heart, when I live in that love that's made its home in my heart, when I know that my heart has been poured over by the love of God, it will, that accepted love will drive fear out. And I, I've taken a twist on this. this it said fear, fear tolerated is faith contaminated, but I took it this way. Fear tolerated is love contaminated. Anytime I entertain fear, anytime I let fear be in, in my thoughts, anytime that I given over to, a, to the spirit of an orphan contaminates that love that's trying to live inside of me. And here's the real easy thing. Just switch your thinking. See, and, and here's the, 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 the cool part about switching your thinking is you just say stuff like, I'm already loved. I've already had the Holy Spirit pour his, the Father's love inside of me. I've already been accepted by love. I've been given a spirit of, of adoption by which I cry, Abba, Father. Your last feeling is this. If I'm already loved, then nothing I can do, there's nothing I can do to change it. If I'm already loved, then there's nothing that I can do to change it. The reason I bought this bed up here to show you, this preacher that I love a lot, his name is Keith Moore, and he was talking about this little boy that was spending the night at his grandmother's house. And he would get so so upset, just a little boy, and. Uh, He'd come crying in his grandma's room and he said, Grandma, I fell out of that bed again. She said, all right, darling, you're okay. You're okay. Go get back in bed. You know, an hour or two later, he'd come running back in grandma's room. Grandma, I fell out of the bed again. You're all right, darling. Go back in there. You'll be all right. Get back in bed. You know, the third or the fourth time that little boy comes running into grandma's grand, just upset. Grandma, I fell out of the bed again. He said, she said, that's all right, darling. Let me show you what to do. So she got out of bed and went into the guest room with her little grandson. And she, let me just, she said, let me show you what you, didn't, what you did wrong. 
And what you did wrong is you just didn't get in deep enough. So that little boy, he got in the middle of that bed. He said, oh, Grandma, I feel secure now. I don't feel like I'm going to, I don't feel like I'm going to fall out now. She goes, that's right. That's the only thing you did wrong. The only thing you did wrong is you just didn't get deep enough in that bed. Have you ever beat up yourself over your life the way that you are? <laughs> what you go through, the experiences you've had. And God's like, that's all right. That's all right. Don't worry about it. You just haven't got deep enough. <laughs> you just haven't got deep enough in that bed. You have not got deep enough into that love. If you fall out, that's okay, darling. Get in that bed and go a little bit deeper. Get where it's real comfy. Get where that love is all around you. And then all you have to worry about is just resting in the love of God. So maybe you're here tonight and you're at that place that your heart is burdened. It's okay. It's okay. Just get a little bit deeper. Get a little bit deeper in that bed. Let me pray for you. Father, I just believe right now that you're speaking to our hearts about your love. And so we receive unconditional love, unimaginable love that only comes from you. So Lord, in a place this, this size with this many people and those that might be watching, I know that you're ministering to each one in their own individual way. You're just that good. And so I, Lord, they thank you that each heart is hearing, each heart is resting, each heart is enjoying the love that you've given us, that we're already loved. And if we don't feel it, we just need to get a little bit deeper in the bed and feel it more. Amen. Amen.